I'm live. What's going on, everyone? Uh, we're going to do an airway management uh, updated video with the Superglottic Airway. Um, we typically give our students about 10 minutes to do this, but on average, it should take you about five to six minutes. Kimberly, who's kind of in frame, out of shot, you can look back, Kimberly. Uh, get, a little, get a little wave. There you go. Um, it's going to be my proctor. Uh, and this is how it would go on test day. Okay, so Kimberly, can you start us off? All right, so you're going to be dispatched to an unresponsive patient. Okay, um, is my scene safe? Your scene is safe. Scene is safe. Um, I have my PPE, which includes eye protection, a mask, gloves, and a gown. Uh, I'm going to check responsiveness. Um, sir, sir, are you okay? There's no response to that. Okay. I'm going to check with a painful stimuli, providing a sternal rub. Hey, here, are you okay? Okay, there's no response to painful no stimuli. Response. I'm just gonna, unresponsive. I'm going to maybe call for ALS at this time. Um, I'm going to check for a pulse no longer than 10 seconds. Okay, you feel a weak pulse. Okay, great. No CPR is needed. I'm going to provide a head tilt chin lift, and I'm going to feel with my cheek for a breath, and my eyes will be looking for chest rise and fall. Do I see any? No, the patient is apneic. Okay, I am then going to look in the mouth to see any blood, vomit, or secretions. You do see vomit in the mouth. Okay, okay. I'm going to set up my suction. I got my canister, my two tubings, I got a yank hour, uh, my rigid catheter, and uh, what I don't have right here is going to be my suction device. So one set of tubing is going to go from the vacuum uh, port to the actual suction device, and then the other tubing is going to go from the patient uh, right here to the yank hour. And I'm going to turn the machine on, and I'm going to uh, test the rigid uh, catheter, or the suction power, on my gloved hand. Do I have suction power? Yes, you have suction. Okay, great. I'm going to open the mouth with a scissor technique, and I'm going to enter the mouth with my thumb off of the hole, as far as I can see, and I'm going to now occlude the hole and provide suction in a swirling motion or following the gum line for no longer than 15 seconds on an adult patient. Okay, the mouth is now clear, uh, but the patient is still apneic. Okay, um, I'm going to set that down for now. I'm going to need to utilize my PBM. Whenever we utilize a PBM, we want an airway adjunct, whether that's an NPA, OPA. First line is going to be OPA. Let's see if the patient has a gag reflex. Let's see if the orange OPA lines up. So we're going to measure from the earlobe to the side of the mouth. And let's see, it looks like the orange OPA is a little too big. Let's go with the pink. Still a little too big. Let's go with the yellow. Seems to be just right. Now the mouth is closed. I'm going to provide that scissor technique. I'm going to insert the OPA upside down about halfway through. I'm going to rotate uh, 180 degrees. And I'm going to ask the doctor, does uh, the patient accept the OPA? Yep, there's no gag reflex. Your patient accepts the adjunct. OK, I'm going to take my BVM. Um, BVM does have tubing. I want to connect this tube into 15 liters per minute of oxygen. Um, going to start ventilating, utilizing a CE technique, CE grip on my mask. I'm going to ventilate once over one second, every five to six seconds. Two, three, four, five, six. Just like that. Um, I'm going to apply a pulse ox on the patient's finger. Uh, can you tell me what the pulse ox is? Pulse ox is deteriorating and it's becoming more difficult to ventilate. It looks like it might be time for a superglottic airway. Okay. I'm going to hand this off and ask my partner to continue ventilating at the same rate, one breath every five to six seconds um, while I check the eye gel. Um, can you tell me approximately how much the patient weighs? The patient weighs about 110 pounds. Okay. Uh, I'm going to turn that into kilograms. So 110 divided by two is about 55, a little less than. Um, 55 kilos, so I'm going to opt for the size 3, which is about between 30, uh, 30 and 60 kilos. Okay. I'm going to prepare one packet of lube before I unholster the eye gel. I'm going to unholster the eye gel. Ensuring that the eye gel is not touching or coming into contact with any dirty surfaces. I'm just going to lubricate the back side of the eye gel. At this time, I'm, I'm ready. I'm going to tell my partner to stop ventilating. They're going to remove the OPA. And I will be providing a tongue jaw thrust or tongue jaw lift. 
making way for this eye gel. And then I'm going to insert the eye gel until I meet resistance. Once I've met resistance, I'm going to apply the colorimetric device. Then apply my EVM on top of that. I'm going to continue ventilating uh, one breath over one second, every five to six seconds. And then now I'm going to confirm if I'm in the right spot and if the eye gel is working appropriately. While I'm ventilating, uh, my partner, can they listen to epigastric sounds? You don't have any epigastric sounds. Okay, great. Uh, what about bilateral lung sounds? Lung sounds are clear by lateral. Okay. Do I have the presence of condensation in the tube? Yes. Great. Uh, what is the color of my colorimetric device? It's starting to, to turn gold. Turning gold. Good. Is my pulse ox improving? Yes. Okay. Is my skin color uh, returning to normal? Yes. Okay. At this point, um, can you assist me uh, and continue to ventilate while I secure the eye gel in place? Just uh, ventilate once every five or six seconds.